Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to jump in and take a look at some important steps that need to be taken when using the front end dig. We want to make these changes because of where the default paths are located and the fact we're limited on the storage space on the internal side of things. When we change this to the external SD, we give ourselves plenty of room to keep those nice crisp thumbnails for our viewing pleasure. We're also going to look at how to install and choose a theme to give us that personalization that we desire. First, we'll make the important change of adjusting the folder destination for our themes and box art. The first thing we need to do is open Dig and navigate to Options. Once we're in here, we'll move down to Game Covers and select it to expand the menu. Now, on the second to last options, we see Storage Location. Choose this and we're given three additional options. We want to go ahead and click on Other Folder on the top left, choose the arrow twice, and then scroll down to so we see SD Card 1. Now, on the top right, we'll click on the plus icon to create a new folder and name it whatever we'd like. Now, choose the new folder and click on Confirm. Now, if you've already done some of the thumbnails before and you've added them, it will ask you if you'd like to move them to the new folder. We can click Yes here. Moving over to Themes, I'll show you how to install one of the already included ones on the device. To do this, we click on Themes to expand the menu, and then down to Install Theme. This will open a menu for us to navigate to the folder. By default, these are stored on the root of our SD card. On the top left, we'll click on the arrow twice, choose SD card 1, and select Revive 1.1 Huntsman.zip. Then, on the bottom right, we'll click on Confirm to install it. Once this is complete, we can now choose to use the theme we just installed. Choosing Select Theme from the arrow, we can now choose Revive 1.1 Huntsman.zip. After a few seconds, you'll hear a familiar sound for the menu. By default, we have all these categories here. I personally like to limit these to what I use most, so we'll go over that now. By holding the home button on the RP2 for two seconds, we can go into mouse mode and select the second to last option on the top. Then we'll choose configure, uncheck the boxes that we don't want to see, and we'll have exactly what we need. I personally like to keep only the systems and favorites on this menu. When we go in and select a system, we have multiple options on how the games are displayed. This varies from one at a time, to a list, to a grid, etc. Here I'll go ahead and select just a few just to give you an idea of what they look like so you know exactly what you want to use for your handheld. Here while navigating it might look like it's stuttering but it's only because it's downloading additional images when I moved some of mine around. So this is not typically how the navigation will look inside Dig. Lastly, we'll take a look at how to set the default emulator for our games for both system and individual, which is mostly the same. First, we click on the options menu for our theme, in this case XMBC on the top right, and choose Manage System. Then, at the top, we see the current selected emulator. By selecting this, we get a list of already supported emulators for the launching our games, and we can choose which one we'd like to use. When choosing a setting for an individual game, we do these same steps, but only when we have selected the game and looking at the menu there. That's going to be all for today's video. I hope this helps you set up and customize your dig front end to your liking. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and think about subscribing. Bye.